Hello guys and welcome back to the 24th part of the Kotlin UB2 Pro series. In the last part we made our shape class abstract which means that we cannot create instances of shape so we don't want to have general shapes we only want to have triangle circles and rectangles and by making it abstract we could add the area and the perimeter function inside of the shape class to define that every shape so every triangle circle or rectangle needs to implement those functions. And if we take a look, for example, in rectangle, then you can see that we have overridden the area function and the perimeter function with the implementation that fits to the rectangle. This video will be about constructor and function overloading. And when I say overloading, that is something different than overriding as we did it here. So currently we only have one way to create a rectangle, for example. The only way we can create a rectangle is um, if we provide the sides A and B here. But in Kotlin we can actually define several ways to instantiate a class that we defined. And to do that we can define what is called secondary constructors. So that is our primary constructor, what we have here. The primary, primary way to um, create a rectangle. But if we want to provide several ways, we can add another constructor here by writing the constructor keyword. And inside of those parentheses, we now need to provide different values with which we can also create a rectangle. So currently we can only create a rectangle with the sides A and B. But let's say we want to be able to create a rectangle which is a square. And for squares, as you know, we only need to know one side of the square so we only need one value and not two and for that we can write a which is a double again and make sure that you don't write val here before that is only allowed in the primary constructor and after the constructor after the closing parentheses we make a colon here followed by this followed by two parentheses again and what this now means is this refers to the primary constructor of rectangle so now we need to provide a way so Kotlin knows how to create a rectangle with only one value and we need to refer to that primary constructor every time we create several constructors so secondary constructors or even more and inside of those parentheses as you saw it before we need to pass in the values that fit to our primary constructor and because we create a square here then we can just pass two times the value a here. So we actually tell Kotlin here that this constructor means that we just call the primary constructor with um, two times the same value and in our example this is just a square. Let's create another constructor here to show you that you can create as many as you want. So write constructor again and now I want to provide a way to create a rectangle with two integer values. So if you take a look at the primary constructor, our sides A and B must be of type double. But if we provide integer values, we also want to be able to create a rectangle with those. So let's write A, which is an integer, and B, which is also an integer. And now after that, closing parentheses, we need to call the primary constructor again by making a colon and this. And now we need to tell Kotlin how to make double values out of those integer values. And as you know that from before, we need to cast them. So we need to write a dot two double. And this a refers now to this a and not to this one. So we want to create this value out of that one. And after that, we can make a comma and provide the second value, so b and we also cast that to a double. And to show you now what all this was for, we want to go back to our tutorials.kt file and create a rectangle. So write val rect is equal to a rectangle. And when we open that parentheses now, you can see that IntelliJ provides us different ways to create a rectangle because we created several constructors here. And you can see we can create a rectangle with a single double value a, we can create a rectangle with two integer values a and b, 
and we can create a rectangle with two double values a and b. And I want to create a square here, so I only need to provide one value. Let's say I make that rectangle um, have the sides five. So I only need to enter one number here. And when we run this program here, you can see that it prints rectangle created with a is equal to five and b is, or is also equal to five because inside of our rectangle class, we created that constructor that only provides, um, that only needs one single value, but that constructor calls our primary constructor with um, two times the same value. So it inserts for our site B, the site A that we pass to that constructor. And that is why that site B is equal to five here. So now we have a way to create a square where we only need to provide one value to the constructor. But you have to keep one thing in mind. So let's say we want to create another constructor for the circle class, a constructor where we need to pass the diameter of a circle. And with the diameter, we could um, calculate the radius, just diameter divided by two. So let's do that. Constructor diameter, which is a double, and that calls the primary constructor of the circle class with diameter divided by two. But as you can see, it's underlined in red. That is not possible because we provided two constructors that both take a single value and that single value is a double. So Kotlin doesn't know when we call a constructor if we want to call the first one or the second one. So keep in mind that every time you overload constructors, like we did in the rectangle class, you need to provide, um, you, you need to make them unique. So when we call that constructor here, for example, with a single value, which is a double, then Kotlin immediately sees that you want to call this one. And if we pass two double values, then it knows you want to call that one. And if you provide two integer values, then you want to call this one. So in that case, in the circle class, we cannot do that. So we remove it again. And what we have just done for constructors applies also to functions. So we are also able to overload functions. Let's jump in our, in our tutorials.kt file. And for example, if you take a look at the print line function at the parameter list, you can see that the print line function has many overloaded functions of itself. So there are many implementations of it. And one implementation takes an any object, one takes a boolean, a byte, a char, a char array, and so on. And we can do the same with our functions. So I want to create a function here that takes two shapes as a parameter and calculates which shape has the bigger area and returns that bigger area. And I want to overload that function. So we have one way to call it with two shapes and we get the maximum area out of two shapes. And that we have one way to call it with three shapes so we can get the maximum area out of three shapes. So let's start by writing fun max area and as parameters, it takes shape one, which is a shape, which is a shape, and shape two, which is also a shape. That function will return a double, because the area in our shape classes are doubles too. Curly brackets here, and inside of that function, we write val area shape one, and set that to shape one dot area and well area shape two set that to shape two area and then we return if the area of our first shape is greater than the area of our second shape if that is the case we want to return area shape one if that is not the case so else we want to return area shape two so a very simple function here but now comes the cool part. Let's copy that function and paste it right below. As you can see now, it underlines it in red because when you hold on to it, conflicting overloads, it's just the same issue I told you in the circle class with the 
constructor where we wanted to pass the diameter. Now we provide two functions here that both take the exact same parameters and the, the exact same return type and that won't work for Kotlin. But as I said, I want to provide an, um, another function that takes a third shape here and returns the maximum area out of those three shapes passed in the parameter here. And as you can see, now it's not red anymore because that is a really unique function now that we created here. Of course, we have to adjust the implementation of that function a little bit. So I remove the whole body and write val max area shape one, um, shape two. So because we already have a function that returns the maximum area out of two shapes, we can use that function from within our um, other function here. So we set that value to the maximum value out of the shape one and shape two. So I call max area shape one, shape two. And then I save the area of the third shape inside of area shape three. So I set that to shape three dot area. And the return value is actually the same pattern as we had before. So we had return if, and now we check if max area shape one, shape two is greater than area shape three. If it is, then we want to return max area shape one, shape two. And if not, we want to return area shape three. So now we can go back into our main function and create some um, shapes here. So I want to create a circle, set that to circle with the radius three. And I want to create a triangle here and set that to triangle with the sides A is equal to seven, B is equal to seven and C is also equal to seven. And now we can um, calculate the maximum areas out of those three shapes with our just created functions. So let's create a variable um, max area rect and circle and set that to max area. And as you can see now, we have two different versions of our max area function. One is with two shapes and one is with three shapes. So we can call that function in two different ways and get the same result each time. And that is the cool thing about overloading functions. So for the first example here, I want to um, insert two shapes, our rect and the circle. And I want to create another variable here, which is max area rect circle and triangle and set that to max area. Now I want to call the, the other function, which takes three shapes and of course pass our three shapes here and triangle. And then we can just print a line, the maximum, yeah, the maximum area of rectangle or the rectangle and the circle is, and then insert max area rect and circle and duplicate that line with control D and modify it a little bit the maximum area of the rectangle, the circle, and the triangle is, and then of course pass max area rect circle triangle. So now we can run that program. And as you can see, our rectangle has the area 25 because both sides are five and the circle has the area 28 and the triangle has the the area 21 and the largest area of those three is of course the circle with 28 and that is exactly the same as you can see here the maximum area of rectangle and circle is 28 and the maximum area out of those three is also 28. so Overloading functions can be really helpful when you want to have the same function 
and you want to call that function in different ways. Your homework is to write a function that takes a list like this and then prints the list in alternating order. So it first prints the first element, then the last, then the second, then this one, and then this one. So one, five, two, four, three. And you should also create a function that does the same, but that takes an array. So you have to overload that function. So you have one function to call it with a list and one function to call with an array. That's it for this video. I hope you like it. And if so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them below so I can answer them. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.